What's up everybody, this is Master Ian Gamer. The brand new Overwatch 2 Battle for Olympus game mode has just released. So in today's video, I'm gonna be running through all the brand new hero abilities that the various playable heroes get in this brand new free-for-all game mode. But before I dive specifically into Battle for Olympus, there was also a small hero balance patch which released today. So I did wanna real quickly just sort of run through the patch notes for this, starting off with the Junker Queen, Adrenaline Rush passive, now heals for the remaining wound damage when an enemy dies with wounds on them. So basically this means you're going to get that full heal amount whenever you wound an enemy, even if they die. Carnage cooldown is now reduced by two seconds for each enemy it impacts. Okay, that's a pretty fun little mechanic there, actually. It means you're going to get heavily rewarded for hitting multiple targets, and you can basically just chain axe swings by consistently hitting a bunch of enemies. That's a fun change. I don't know how useful it'll actually end up be for her on the balance side of things, but I definitely like fun changes like that. Jagged Blade, thrown impact damage reduced from 80 to 50. Thrown direct impacts now add a 30 damage wound to the stuck target. Stacks with wounds caused by quick melee or returning Jagged Blade hits. So this seems to indicate that you're just going to be healing a bit more from a direct hit with the Jagged Blade because of that extra wound damage it deals, which is good because Junker Queen still isn't in the best spot as a tank hero, and overall I don't think any of these changes are particularly outstanding for her or going to be that impactful, but they're a nice little extra edge and definitely play into what makes the character unique, and definitely that Carnage change I think is just going to be a fun little mechanic to get to play with. Moving on to the next hero who got changes, Zarya, Energy Pack passive energy degeneration reduced from 2.2 to 2 per second, so she just loses energy a bit slower, and the delay before energy degeneration begins after gaining energy is increased from 1 to 2 seconds. That's all Zarya got, not a whole lot, basically it means she can retain energy a bit more efficiently. Moving on to the support heroes though, Brigitte, Barrier Shield, Health Increase from 250 to 300, and Moira, Biotic Orb, Dealing Damage with Biotic Orb, now restores a small amount of Biotic Energy. Okay, both of these are very minor changes, little teeny weeny buffs that uh, probably aren't gonna do anything, but eh, it's nice, I guess. That does it though for the hero changes in this balance patch. Again, it was a very small balance update, not much going on with it. But now let's move on to the details for the brand new Battle for Olympus free-for-all game mode, which is of course starting today. So according to the blog post put out by Blizzard, from now through January 19th, we're introducing an all new game mode, Battle for Olympus. In this limited time free-for-all deathmatch, heroes go head to head, wielding the power of Greek gods, goddesses, and creatures. Battle for Olympus will feature seven heroes that get special powers when they activate their divine ultimates that stack new effects on top of the ability. Alongside their divine ultimates, heroes have unique interactions with one another as they ascend from mortal to myth in Battle for Olympus. So here are the actual new abilities that each of the playable heroes will be getting. Poseidon Ramatra, Divine Annihilation. Ravenous Vortex is a large whirlpool that pulls in enemies and then launches them upwards, and Pummel throws large water blasts that deal more damage and travel further. So this one seems to be just little buffs basically for his different abilities during Annihilation. Overall, I think Ramatra actually got one of the lamer set of abilities in this mode, but let's move on to some of the other ones because these are pretty interesting. Zeus Jungle Junker Queen, Divine Rampage, lasts 20 seconds, and damage done with Scattergun has the chance to apply additional lightning damage to her abilities. So it seems like it's a sort of like a damage boost type thing where she gets this sort of extra damage for 20 seconds after using Rampage. Again, not one of the more particularly interesting ones we have going on here, but next up we got Minotaur Reinhardt, Divine Earth Shatter, lasts 20 seconds, Heals when he charges and slams an enemy into a wall. Charge can pin up to three targets at once, and charge cooldown is reduced to three seconds. Also, wall slams deal lethal damage, extend the divine power, and set the next charge cooldown to 0.5 seconds. Yes, so Reinhardt becomes a charge spam machine with his divine earth shatter. I think this is going to be a very fun one to get to play around with and see how this actually feels in practice. But moving on to Cyclops Roadhog, 
Divine Whole Hog lasts 15 seconds, greatly increases your size, gaining 600 health, Pearl Boulders that deal massive damage instead of his normal ultimate fire, and Melee deals five times damage and pushes enemies away. This is another one that I think is going to be very fun to play around with, turning into a giant Cyclops Roadhog shooting out boulders. Oh, that is going to be a fun one. Hades Farah, Divine Rocket Barrage, lasts 20 seconds, can move during the ultimate ability. Rocket Launcher fires three-headed rockets. That's an interesting little detail. Jump Jet Fuel consumption is greatly reduced and kills Heal Farah and extend the duration of this effect. So this is another one where it's basically just a better version of her basic Rocket Barrage, not a whole ton of extra details added to it. But next up we got Medusa Widowmaker, Divine Infrasight, while scoped in Enemies looking at you turn into stone. Yep, she can now freeze her enemies if they look at her, making headshots incredibly easy. That is such a fitting detail for both Widowmaker and the Medusa concept. I feel like that might be a bit annoying to play against, but we'll have to see. We might not be too bad. And last but not least, Hermes Lucio, Divine Sound Barrier, lasts 20 seconds, always able to jump again after jumping off a wall. Boop can always knock enemies into walls for extra damage and a short stun. Ooh boy, that's gonna be fun. Attack and move speed greatly increased, and infinite ammo. Oh boy, the Reddit Lucios are gonna be coming out in force for this one. I cannot wait to see how this one plays out. So also it's worth noting for the Battle of Olympus game mode, immortalize your favorite hero through a little friendly competition during Battle for Olympus. The hero with the highest number of kills overall from the event will have their statue placed on the Ilios Ruins arena map to commemorate their victory. Check out Overwatch on Twitter regularly to stay updated on current Battle for Olympus leaderboard standings. So yeah, they're gonna just make a statue of whichever hero ends up getting the most kills over the course of the event, and it's presumably just gonna be there forever on the arena map version of Ilios Ruins. That's a pretty cool little detail right there, just having this sort of immortalized, commemorative type thing. I definitely like that Blizzard's trying something like that. There also are a number of cosmetics and other rewards you can get through playing the event. You can apparently unlock new voice lines and player titles, as well as the old legendary skin Winged Victory Mercy by just playing through the event. So that's nice if you didn't happen to have that skin already, but I think most veteran Overwatch players probably already do. And of course, all the new Greek mythology skins will be in the Overwatch 2 shop for the duration of this event, so feel free to spend real money to get them if you so please. That does it though for all the details in today's update. The brand new Battle for Olympus game mode is live right now. I'm definitely going to be playing it because it sounds pretty fun, but I would love to hear your thoughts on all this in the comments down below. Are you excited to get to play Battle for Olympus or... Maybe you're going to pass and just keep doing competitive or quick play or whatever else it is. Either way, I'd love to hear your thoughts, though, and thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, hit up that bell icon, and come join my Discord server to hang out, never miss any of my future Overwatch content. Special thanks to my YouTube channel members who help make these videos possible, and if you'd like to join them to earn some cool rewards, then just hit that join button down below. Otherwise, this is Master Ian Gamer signing off, and until next time, have a great day.